So what's happening, Facebook? This is your boy, Reg. I felt it was necessary to come and talk a little bit about what's going on in Israel today. Uh, God has not broken this covenant with Israel. You know, God made an unconditional and eternal covenant with, his, with the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you, you first read about that in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, where it says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I, and I will bless thee and I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and I will curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So that's the foundational covenant with Abraham. He promised Abraham all that land from he said, unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. That covers all of modern day Israel. It covers the northeastern part of Africa from the Nile River all the way uh, east. It covers Syria. It covers Lebanon. It covers all of uh, Jordan, uh, uh, most of Iraq, and a sizable portion of Saudi Arabia. So God gave the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that land forever. And so, now, if you want to read where it says forever, turn it in your Bible. I don't have my Bible in front of me. I'm driving down the street. Genesis chapter 17, verse 8. It says that God has given that land to the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob forever. Actually, it says to Abraham forever but he confirms his covenant with Isaac in Genesis chapter 26 and he con confirms his covenant with Jacob in Genesis chapter 28 and then he confirms that covenant with the whole entire nation of Israel at Mount Sinai so that land belongs to the physical descendants of Abraham Isaac and Jacob don't listen to the mainstream media don't listen to uh, these talk the talk I call it the talking snake media don't even pay them any attention because they're not looking at things through scriptural lenses. So you cannot find, you're not going to be able to find a, uh, somebody in the mainstream media that's going to line everything up with the scriptures. Now, God has not broken his covenant with Israel. He said, my covenant, he said that he would never break his covenant with Israel. That's not going to happen. And so now, did Israel reject Jesus Christ? Yes. Well, the whole entire na the nation of Israel as a whole rejected Jesus Christ at his first coming. Some Jews got saved. Peter got saved. Paul got saved. And other Jews got saved. But the nation of Israel as a whole rejected Jesus Christ at his first coming. If Israel would have accepted Jesus Christ as their Messiah, as their personal Savior, that would have ushered in the kingdom age right there. If, if When Jesus entered Jerusalem, he rode in on a donkey on the 10th day of the first month. He was crucified on the 14th day of the first month. That lines up with the book of Exodus and all of that because Jesus is the Lamb of God. Lambs were crucified, were picked out on the 10th day of the first month. They were crucified on the 14th day of the first month so that was a picture of Jesus Christ dying on the cross he fulfilled the prophecies but here's the thing if Israel would have put their faith if the nation of Israel as a whole would have accepted Jesus Christ as their Messiah put their faith in Jesus Christ that would have ushered in the kingdom age if they would accept if Israel would have accepted Jesus Christ you wouldn't even have to worry about Judas Rome would have crucified Jesus Rome only accepted one God and his name was Caesar. And so Rome would have crucified Jesus. Jesus would have rose the third day and then the kingdom age would have began. But unfortunately, the nation of Israel rejected Jesus Christ and now we're in this current church age and God is using the church to get the message of the cross out to the nations of the world. That responsibility was originally given to the nation of Israel. But since they rejected Jesus Christ as their personal savior, that responsibility is, has been handed over to the church. All right, now let's move forward. Am I in agreement with all of Israel's po policies? No, Israel is in rebellion. They rejected Jesus Christ. A lot of them are not saved. Most of them haven't accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior and they're in rebellion. 
I don't agree with the. I think they got the LGBTQ gay rights parades and all this other nonsense that's going on in Israel. And this this is typical of Israeli behavior. When they came out of Egypt, what did they do? They worshipped the golden calf. They offered up sacrifices, ch child sacrifices to the false god Molech. They Israel has always been in rebellion. But um, even even that party that took place in the Negev Desert, I heard that they were doing some strange partying in there. It might have been some rated X stuff going on. But th that doesn't mean that God has broken his covenant with Israel. It just means that they're living in rebellion. Do I agree with all of their politics? No. I don't agree with everything that Israel does politically. Now, one question came up this morning. Now, you got this battle going on between Israel and Hamas. Will an Israeli soldier, if he gets killed in battle, uh, Israel, I'm referring to an Israeli soldier. If he gets killed in battle, will he go to heaven? The answer to that question is the only way he'll go to heaven is he put, puts his faith exclusively in Christ and the cross. If he doesn't put his faith in the finished work of the cross, then that Israeli soldier would die eternally lost. The, a soldier from Hamas would die eternally lost if they don't put their faith in Christ and the cross. So you see where Satan is trying to kill off people so that he can win souls to his kingdom. So we got to pray for Israeli soldiers. We got to pray for the Palestinians that they come to Christ. But here's the point that I'm making. God has not broken his covenant with Israel. He will never break his covenant with Israel. The prophecies that center around the nation of Israel will be fulfilled in its totality at, during the uh, kingdom age. Christ will return to this earth at the conclusion of the seven year tribulation period at the battle of Armageddon because the nations of the world are going to come against Jerusalem. Satan wants Jerusalem. The reason why Satan wants Jerusalem, because he's he fully knows the prophecies that center around Jerusalem, that Jesus Christ will rule and reign on the throne of David from the city of Jerusalem. He's aware of those prophecies. That's why he want he hates Israel. He hates the Jewish people. That's why you saw uh, he he knows the prophecies that the Abrahamic covenant better than most deacons in the church do, most preachers. And well, he knows the Abraham. He's aware of the Abraham. I don't know if he believes the Abrahamic covenant. I believe that he somehow can shift. He believes in the theater of his mind that he can shift prophecy. But he's going to find out that he's wrong. But God has not broken his covenant with Abraham. And so during the king, when Jesus Christ returned, the battle of Armageddon, let's make this clear here. The battle of Armageddon will be fought over Jerusalem. Whoever controls Jerusalem controls the world and so jerusalem is the epicenter of not only the world uh, of planet earth but it's the epicenter of the whole entire universe and so prop bible prophecy centers around jerusalem satan wants to control jerusalem he'll build after the lord raptures his church the antichrist has signed a seven-year peace treaty with israel and the first order of business is going to be the rebuilding of the third temple and the jews are going to reinstitute animal sacrifices you can study the animal sacrifices in Leviticus chapter 1 through 7. It talks about the sin offerings, the burnt offerings, the peace offerings, the uh, the all the offerings. I can't remember them all, but it's the sin offering, burnt offering, peace offering, the uh, meal offering, and it was another one, uh, trespass offering. Yeah, okay, so thank you, Holy Spirit. They're going to reinstitute animal sacrifices. They reject we all know that the blood of bulls and lambs can't save anybody it's the blood of jesus christ that saves but they don't understand that or either they just rejected it all together they just totally omit isaiah chapter 53 from their script from the bible tear it out I, they must tear it out and throw it away but jesus will return to this earth he was ruling reign on the throne of david from the city of jerusalem Every square inch of land that God promised the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will come under Jewish control. Israel would control all of uh, modern-day Israel, Jordan, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, northeastern part of Africa, and a portion of Saudi Arabia. And prophecy will be fulfilled. 
but I don't, I'm not here to say that I condone everything that Israel is doing. I don't condone everything that the church is doing or everything that the world is doing. But God has not broken this covenant with the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He never has and he never will. So, all right, well, I got to go. I love you guys. God bless you.